Hi everyone, I'm Jim White, amateur call sign KQAE, and uh, in this video I'm going to share with you a uh, discovery that I made uh, regarding uh, how to match uh, small vertical antennas, and it involves uh, using a dummy load. Uh, this dummy load uh, I built uh, in order to uh, evaluate the harmonics and the output of a transmitter. So it has a uh, separate output for 40 dB down from the input signal to run to a spectrum analyzer. Now there's a link to the video below where I show how this is made. And uh, what's inside here is four 100 watt uh, power resistors. And uh, we're going to feed this dummy load and then I'll show you how to tap from the dummy load to the antenna that you want to match. This is uh, my homemade tripod, and this is uh, a standard uh, 102 inch uh, telescoping whip that's available uh, from many sources. And, uh, I connected this coax that's running into my shack uh, to the dummy load and what I'm going to do is connect right where the uh, center conductor of the coax comes into the box and I'm going to arrange it here so that I can clip on to the whip. Now we have no ground radials uh, at all, and uh, I, I find I have a one-to-one -one match at this point, and the way we're going to demonstrate that this actually works is to uh, transmit on uh, Whisper, WSPR, and we'll get signal reports from uh, around the world, hopefully, and I've done this before, so I know that it really does work, and uh, we can get out uh, all over the, the world on 20 meters and of course a great portion of the US and Canada on 40 meters. And the beauty of this is you get a one-to-one -one match on every band. So the, the proof is do people hear us and can we hear other people with this setup? And I'm going to demonstrate that uh, we really do. I'm not the uh, first guy to use Whisper uh, to compare the performance of uh, antennas. Uh, there's several videos uh, on YouTube that uh, show people comparing two different vertical setups uh, with the number of stations uh, that hear them uh, on uh, Whisper. So there's nothing new about this. It's, it's kind of a uh, well-recognized way to evaluate an antenna. And in this case, we're evaluating uh, the antenna and the match. So this is a very simple match, doesn't require radials, and as you're about to see, it, re it really does work. So here we are in the uh, ham shack. Uh, the rig here is a uh, 7300 and we're on uh, 20 meters right now. And here's the uh, screen you'll s typically see on Whisper. And uh, what's coming in right now is a list of the stations that uh, I am hearing. And uh, I haven't transmitted yet, so these are the stations that I'm receiving. And uh, we're going to enable transmit and transmit on the next cycle. Now the cycles are two minutes long and that's what that bar here is at the bottom of the screen. So at the end of that uh, two minute period where it's listening uh, it uh, will transmit. Now I've chose not to upload spots the spots would be these stations that I'm hearing, and uh, I don't want them to get mixed in with the 
stations that uh, are hearing me. So I chose not to upload uh, them to the internet. So uh, there's uh, various videos showing what Whisper is all about. It's WSPR, and uh, you can search for those videos if you really want to see uh, what that's all about. But uh, right now what I'm trying to show is that not only <clears throat> am I receiving signals with that uh, and little tiny antenna with the dummy load match, uh, but we're also, people are going to hear us transmitting just as well. So we're nearing the end of the receive cycle and uh, we'll go into a transmit cycle. Uh, by the way, I'll be transmitting at uh, a level of 20 watts. Okay, the uh, transmitter just came on. We're uh, now transmitting and we'll transmit for uh, two minutes per cycle and I'll let it go through several cycles and uh, then we'll go look at uh, who has heard us. Okay, we've uh, transmitted through several cycles now, so I'm going to halt the transmission. And uh, I've previously opened whispernet.org, uh, which is where you go to view your results. And uh, we want to look at our results on 20 meters. And we want to update. Okay, here. Now I need my other hand in order to zoom into the mat. Okay, you got to do a control zoom here, but you can see uh, we're getting all over the U.S. and Canada and up here into Europe. So if you click on a uh, station, what it says there is hearing KQAD. So let's go back to the U.S. Now if you click on your call, in this case my call, KQAD, it lists all the stations uh, that have heard you. So you can go ahead and count them up. And that's what uh, people are doing when they uh, compare antennas. And uh, after we look at uh, 40 meters, I'll show you uh, what's wrong with all this stuff we're doing here. Here's uh, some data from uh, our 40 meter transmissions. It's about uh, 50 stations there that uh, heard us in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, it's pretty impressive with such a simple setup. Okay, instead of uh, just looking at the map, let's scroll up here and we can look at the database that was used to uh, draw the map. So let's look at our 20 meter data. All right. Here's the call of the of the stations that uh, heard us, and right here is the critical thing. This is the signal to noise ratio, and as you can see, they're all negative. And here's the strongest one. It's only two dB below the noise level. Here's one that's 1 dB below the noise level. That's amazing, actually. But you see that all of these signals are way below the noise level. So you could not uh, carry on a single sideband QSO with any of these stations. So the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, when you see people using Whisper, and just counting up the number of stations that heard them, 
that really doesn't count. Whisper uh, uses very sophisticated signal processing software to dig signals out of the noise. It's truly amazing. Uh, but there's no way you could carry on a sideband QSO or even a CW QSO uh, with these ridiculous signal to noise ratios. Well, that was a lot of fun uh, showing you how a uh, highly compromised antenna could be uh, heard uh, in US, Canada, uh, Europe, and even in Africa. Uh, but that magic is due to the signal processing software of WHISPER. And WHISPER stands for Weak Signal uh, Propagation Reporting. So uh, we saw most of the signal to noise ratios uh, at the receiving points were uh, as high as uh, 33 dB below the noise level. So uh, they were useless in terms of uh, com communications uh, in either single sideband or CW. So this is what we really had. Our, our coax came out to the dummy load, 50 ohm dummy load. We were putting 20 watts into it and we had a 102 inch whip uh, connected right here. And I don't know how to calculate the radiated power uh, I'm guessing the effective radiated power would be in the milliwatts. So it's a very compromised antenna, but it does give you a one-to-one -one SWR on all bands. So no tuning is required. So uh, we're losing 99.9% .9 of our power in that dummy load. Now what I find kind of interesting is when you uh, look at videos about mag loop, antennas, that's magnetic loop antennas. The uh, discussion is always about efficiency, how uh, you need to weld everything and have huge conductors and so forth uh, so that they can be very efficient. But when we get into these portable antennas for POTA and SODA, uh, the quarter wave verticals with loading coils, uh, nobody seems to care about efficiency. And uh, when you're Using battery power, uh, as, as many people are in that kind of activity, RF is precious. Uh, you don't want all these losses in loading coils turning you into a QRP station, or even less. You may start out being QRP and end up in the milliwatts. So how do you know that uh, these antennas are inefficient? Well, a lot of them have very low power ratings. And why? Because they get hot and they have to dissipate the power. Uh, in the uh, N-fed half-wave antenna, uh, where we have these ferrites, uh, the ferrites get hot. And uh, most people have them enclosed in boxes and don't realize it. But a lot of power is going into those ferrites. Now, I've seen uh, videos of guys measuring the efficiency uh, with a, a vector network analyzer. Now my, my vector network analyzer puts out a signal of roughly one volt peak to peak. And that's hardly enough to drive around uh, a hysteresis loop in a ferrite. So when you get up into the real signal levels, uh, hysteresis loops get large and the efficiency goes way down. So when you see somebody advertising a antenna with a uh, loading coil or just loading coils and you see something like a 20 watt rating for digital and things like that, that's because they generate heat, uh, which is, is losing your RF power. Uh, one of the uh, popular loading coils uh, is wound with stainless steel wire. A stainless steel has a resistance 41 times higher than copper. And uh, one of those coils has an end-to-end -end resistance of over six ohms at DC. So with uh, skin effect and proximity effects, I'm sure the uh, losses are much higher than you would think with just six ohms. 
also where the uh, slider makes contact uh, uh, between turns, it actually shorts out a turn. So you end up with a high circulating current in that shorted turn. So uh, these loading coils and antennas with built-in loading coils are sort of acting like a dummy load. They, they have a lot of losses. So I think what the world needs is a uh, efficient loading coil. And I'm, I'm working on that presently. And uh, I'll be putting out a video uh, shortly uh, showing uh, a good way to make uh, loading coils uh, very efficient. So uh, subscribe and uh, click that like button and uh, we'll show you that as soon as we can.